on this episode of The Breakthrough Show. Starting off the show on our Hot Topic segment, we're welcoming one half of the JT and Leanne Morning Show from 98.9 Bama Country, Leanne Thompson. Leanne joins us to share her thoughts on what her role has been in the media during times of crisis in her community and the world. Plus, you'll hear the hilarious story of how she met JT, married him, and what it was like raising their blended family on the radio. Then we're meeting with the author of the book, Remember His Name, Judith Finneran. In our conversation, we have a candid look at grief and the grieving process through her own loss of her beloved husband, Ralph. We'll be diving into topics that no one seems to talk about when it comes to grief in the hopes that you don't feel alone when you experience the loss of a loved one. Get ready to laugh, cry, reminisce, and more coming up on this episode. Life gives us moments when we have the opportunity to make a choice. And what we choose has the potential to change our lives forever. Join us now for another inspired episode of The Breakthrough. And now, please welcome the creator and host of the show, Jessica Dugas. Welcome back to The Breakthrough Show. I'm so excited to have you here today for another episode of the Daytime Talk Show, helping you and inspiring you to change the way you look at and live your life through inspirational stories and, of course, entertainment. Coming up later on the show today, we're going to be talking to my friend Judith Finneran, who is the author of this book right here called Remember His Name. She has become a good friend of mine over this last little while that I've known her, and we dig into some deep topics about grief and of course, um, just navigating your journey as your world is kind of turned upside down a little bit. And so I'm really excited to have her on later in the show. But first up today, we have somebody coming on the show that I used to listen to on the radio uh, a minute ago. <laughs> and, um, and it was, let me just say on a personal note, it was such a comforting thing to me because radio and music and all of that have always been been kind of really important in my own life and a safe space. And when I moved down here to Alabama from my comfort zone of New England, um, I was like, I, you know, I don't know about this. I don't know about this. Ooh. And, um, and so it was so cool to be able to turn on the radio and hear uh, something that made me laugh and something that was fun for me. And so that is where I first heard our guest today. And then um, somehow, I don't even remember how we became friends on Facebook. She is a veteran, which we love here on the show. She's also one half of the JT and Leanne morning show on Bama country here in Alabama. Please welcome to the show, Leanne Thompson. Well, thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. And, um, I think we really got connected when, um, we were talking about, uh, 31 bags. <laughs> yeah, we had, we, we connect, we talked about that and, but we had been, I think I had heard something that you were doing on the radio and had, I said, well, I'm just going to send her a friend's request. And th so that was a while back now. And then we, you know, you, sometimes you friend people and life happens and you're like, who, I, you know, you just, yeah, who, you who don't are talk. You again? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, um, and so it's awesome that we've been able to stay connected after this time. And now finally you have the opportunity to get to know each other a little bit. Cause, cause we are in the same state. So there's that. <laughs> yes, absolutely. And, um, believe it or not, I'm actually, um, from Maine. I was born in Maine. Uh, uh my parents moved me to Pensacola when I was eight. So, um, uh, not that moving from Pensacola, Florida to Alabama is, is a big stretch, but it is in, in, yeah. in some sense and in some different way. Um, and, you know, when we moved here, um, my husband and I uh, were blending a family and I was starting a new career. So it was very, um, very tricky, very, very mm. trying times in the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> I, and, and I know, least. I know, you know, like even talking about the difference between new England and the South, I mean, it's just another, it's another planet. And a lot of people it don't is. understand that. <laughs> uh, it's, it's a totally different planet. It, it, it's just so different. I, I, 
I can't, there's just no words. <laughs> <laughs> there aren't, there aren't. We're going to eventually here, we're going to stump a talk show host and a radio host. We're just not going to have anything to say in a minute. Here. I know. So exactly. <laughs> moving on. Um, so you are in radio. And one of the things that I really wanted to talk about this season on the show was kind of the role of media when we're going through something around the world when something big is happening like the pandemic like um you know political things like racial things there's a lot of things that come up that have come up in the world especially in the last year and a half or not come up but been more front page news and so that was something i had to navigate for the first time in doing the show last season and go well what exactly do i do here so i'd love to get your perspective of what you feel your role is when things like this go on well, we started Bama Country March 1st of last year, mm. and we're thinking, yes, we're so excited to be back on the radio. It's going to be so much fun, and then the world stopped, and COVID locked us down, and my husband and I were like, well, what, what are we going to talk about? I mean, there's, there's nothing open. You can't go anywhere. Um, you can only educate people and talk about the same things so much, you know? So we just kind of, you know, really dug deep into local business and supporting local businesses once they kind of got to the point where they could do curbside or takeout. You know, we, we really promoted local business, how they were doing business. And we really tried to stay positive and light and fun. I mean, no, no disrespecting any media, but I mean, my goodness, you can turn on the news and, and get instantly angry, instantly mad, instantly sad. So, you know, we, we really tried to stay positive and, um, you know, light, uh, talking about the music and, you know, just different things that we were going through, what, what kind of we were struggling with, you know, um, but being locked down, um, you know, we still went to work every day. So it was, it, we kind of got to to see the world, you know, a little bit different than everybody who was locked in their home. When we went through something, that's what we shared, you know, all right, the first time I'm going to Walmart, you know, I'm doing the curbside pickup or I'm doing the delivery, you know, I survived, you know, do you, do you really have to wipe down your grocery bags before you bring them in the house? I mean, are yeah. people really doing that? <laughs> you know, so it yeah. was, it was, it was kind of the fun spin, but educating in the same respect. Mm. I love that. And it's kind of sounds like you looked at everything that was going on and said to yourselves, okay, now what can I actually do? Because you could, you could make the decision to go down the rabbit hole of some of the bigger news, you know, things that we're not mentioning of and take suck people right into that, the drama mm -hmm. of it and everything else. But you chose to do what you could do, which was to focus on what you know, what you're going through and what those around you are going through as well. Right. Absolutely. And, you know, when we started Bama Country uh, last year, that's a country radio station. Um, we, we had taken two years off and were at a different company in the same town, um, for 13 years. Mm -hmm. So we had like, you know, um, uh, raised our kids on the radio and talked about our lives on the radio. And, and, you know, people were like, I listen to you every morning on the way to work going up 65 or going up 85, or I listen to you, you know, in the carpool line. So, you know, we, we, we had a, established, mm. um, you know, relationship with, with our listeners and everybody was so excited to hear us back on the radio. And so we were just able to just dig deep and talk about personal stuff and, you know, just try and be a friend through the radio. Mm, I love that. Cause that's how, that's what I felt when I first listened to you guys, you weren't on Bama country at the time. It was a different station, but, um, that's, that's what I felt. It, I was looking for something that felt like home and that's, you know, I would laugh with you guys and of course love the music and everything else. Um, have you ever throughout this process or any other time felt pressure to talk about certain things or do, have you always just gone with whatever you feel like you should talk about? Well, we are a, a music-based radio station, so we're not news talk. We're mm -hmm. not anything like that. So 
that's not really what people tune in to us to hear. Mm -hmm. There are other outlets for that in our area um, and they do a great job. But, you know, if if you want to hear talk radio, if you want to hear all the craziness and politics, you can listen somewhere else because we're not going to go there. Um, you know, that's just not who we are. Um, nor and right now in this stage of our life, it's it's just not who we want to be. You know, mm -hmm. yes, we all have opinions and and you know thoughts on different things going on, but um, you know we're we're just we just talk about us and family and going to church and you know watching different things online and uh, do you really go from cable to the fire stick? Is it safe? You know, <laughs> I mean, just 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 little different things like that. We, we have dogs and, you know, everybody loves kids and dogs and we talk about kids and dogs and just different things. We, we try and take the high road. We try and, and, you know, let the, the, the news do their job and, and, and we kind of stay in our lane and, and just roll with the music and, and keep it light and fun. Mm. I love that perspective though, because I think a lot of times the different, different roles that people have, they can look into what other people are doing and say, well, they're not actually doing anything serious here. And that's not, you know, and people get, and then the same for vice versa of going, you know, saying to them, well, you're too serious and don't you ever have any fun. And, and I think saying that, that we all have different roles to play and just sticking in our lane and what we're good at, yes. it's really important, right? Absolutely. And, you know, that's, that's one of the things that, that we really try and focus on is, is stay in our lane. You know, people listen to us because they, they love country music. Um, and that's the music that we're playing. And, and they listen to us because they want to know what's going on locally. Um, they want to know what we're doing. You know, they, they want to know what's going on this weekend, you know, so we, we work for a local company now. And um, that's, that's really our heart and our focus is, is local. Um, and you can, you can listen to radio so many different ways mm -hmm. now, and you can listen to music so many different ways. Now, everybody has a choice and, um, you know, I don't have to make everybody happy because you can't, you can yeah. drive yourself nuts trying to make everybody happy. I'm just thankful that, you know, we've, we've been able to to kind of be a, a fun spot, a safe spot, a safe spot for, you know, the family to, to listen to and, and give you the information in just little doses. <laughs> One of the questions that I had for you before we go to break here is, do you feel like radio is still as relevant as it used to be? Because now we have things like, you know, we have XM, we have like a lot of these other, a lot of people are home now. Let's just talk about yes, that for a minute. Absolutely. They're not in the car going to work and turning on the radio anymore. Do you feel like that, that, that has changed at all the environment? Um, I hope radio is still relevant as it was. Um, do, do we have the, the sole ears of everybody uh, as, as radio as a whole? No, because there's so many different choices. But, you know, um, we, we focus on local folks, local radio. Our kids go to school together, you know. Um, my daughter knows your son. And, you know, we, we talk about, you know, different things going on in the local community. And that's if that's what you want, that's what we try to provide. I mean, you can drive yourself crazy trying to, well, I got to be better than yeah. this station and I got to be better than that satellite stuff. You know, it, it, you just stay in your lane and, and be the best person that you can be. Mm, that's beautiful. It really is. And it sounds like that creating those relationships is really important as well, especially focusing on local. Like you want to know the people that you're trying to reach as well. Absolutely. And, um, you know, I'm, we, we do birthdays every morning, people can call <laughs> us and email us, you know, so we do birthdays and, and, you know, we, we have a pretty good signal. So, um, just recently, um, uh, you know, we're, we're in the, in the crazy weather, you know, so spring is, is crazy weather in all over the world, but, mm -hmm. you know, it is here, um, in Alabama and, you know, we, we pride ourselves on, you know, we're, make sure your weather radio is set. And if you need help, you know, uh, these are the, you know, make sure you know yeah. your counties and, and, you know, you can listen to us. We're going to provide you that information. And, 
you know, that's when radio is at its best mm -hmm. is when you, you, you need the information and it's there at the touch of your fingers. Yes. Yes. I remember being little and turning on the radio and pr waiting in new England though, waiting for them to say my school was canceled <laughs> when it snowed. Like that was the place to be. <laughs> JT says the same thing when we kind of reminisce, but now the poor kids, well, it's a virtual school day. There's no more snow days, no more snow days. I know it. I know it different, different times, but it'll be interesting to see the progression as time goes on of how radio changes. And, um, and I have such good memories of radio and you kind of brought a little bit of that back to me here today. Um, we're going to take a quick break and come on with Judith and we're going to be back with Leanne at the end and hear a little bit about her story. And of course, let you know where you can listen to radio. Cause that's important too. Um, we'll be back in just a minute for more of the breakthrough show. Welcome to E360 TV, the live streaming and on-demand destination for influential voices and enlightened audiences. We offer trending, grassroot, and purpose-driven content across a diverse range of interests. E360 TV is more than just watching programs. We offer the ability to interact with live shows connecting audiences to real, authentic influencers and storytellers while streaming to millions of devices. Real experiences. Raw conversations. One destination for it all. E360 TV. Welcome back to the Breakthrough Show. You know, we've heard so many stories over the last five seasons of the show that you know, tells us that we are able to, it's possible to take a tragedy in our lives and create a breakthrough moment for it from it and to use those tragedies that happen to not only change our lives, but change the lives of other people as well. Our special guest today is a mom. She's an educator. She enjoys helping people navigate their personal and spiritual journeys. And she's also a filmmaker, which we're going to hear a little bit about today. Please welcome my special guest, Judith Finner, into the show. Judith, welcome. Hey, thank you so much. Glad to be here. I'm so excited to have you here. It's been a minute since we first talked. Do you like to be called Judith or do you prefer Judy or how, how do you? Actually, Judith. And, and that came about after my husband was killed. Somebody asked me what my name was and I said, Judith. Just like it was a message from spirit. I Otherwise, I was always Judy. Oh, very interesting. You know, it's funny because being Jessica, people people call me whatever they want. <laughs> It's right, been, right. it's been <laughs> Jess, Jesse, even Jay, and, and then Jesse spelled 12 different ways. And I think as I've gotten older, oh, I'm yeah. like, I'm, I'm Jessica. Thank you. <laughs> yes. It's so interesting. And I remember people years ago, right? They would say, do you go by Judy or Judith? And often I would say, I don't care whatever you want, but yeah, now it's, no, it's Judith. <laughs> yes, I like that. Taking control. We know what we want to be called. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I love it. I love it. Well, uh, Judith, start by sharing with our audience something that's bringing you joy today. Okay, that's easy because I'm at Disney World. Get out. <laughs> I'm at Disney World. I'm sitting in an RV right now at Fort Wilderness, which is their campground area. I've never been in the campground area ever and to be here at Christmas I am so bummed that I didn't get to Lowe's and get me some inflatables <laughs> they is there a lot out there oh my gosh hundreds if not thousands it's the in thing to do and they call it looping so you rent a golf cart or you bring a golf cart and you drive through the loops at night and you see everybody's displays That's so and it fun. has 
brought me tremendous joy because I love, love, love Christmas. I do too. And I know when, when this episode comes out, obviously it's not Christmas, but you know what we can, we can, and I just got done saying that this morning on my project joy podcast, just because it's not the holiday season anymore. doesn't mean we can't experience the joys of the holiday season, like giving, like reminiscing on the beautiful lights that we saw. So maybe, um, you know, as you're watching or listening today, you can have the, bring those memories back and experience joy whenever, whenever, whatever day this is, doesn't matter that it's not Christmas anymore. Right. And we can keep decorating and keep lights up. Yes. <laughs> like I love the multicolored lights. Yeah. I think I'm going to keep doing that. Thing. Well, I know that you, um, as I mentioned in the little intro, you've been through quite uh, an experience in your life. I would love for you, can you start off by taking us back and telling us a little bit about your husband? Oh my gosh. Yeah. Well, his name was Ralph and I used to call him Ralphie and, and sometimes I would call him Ralpher and he would call me Juder. <laughs> I have no idea why. And then my kids are named Holly and Rory. So we'd go Halster and Rorster. I don't, I don't know where those came from, but anyway, he was the sweetest, gentlest soul, probably that I've ever met till this day. And we were madly, madly in love. I mean, when he got killed, oh my gosh, I'm already going to start crying, but he, we live in a tri-level, so I would come down the stairs, he would be up first. And I would come down the stairs. He would greet me with a cup of coffee and say, good morning, beautiful. So and see, this is why I didn't put my eyelashes on today, people. I knew <laughs> it was going to happen. <laughs> it's, you know, it's, I miss him to this day. And it will be, it was 2011. So it'll be what, 10 years next year. So what happened, um, Judith, for anybody that's listening and doesn't know what happened to Ralph? He, this was so bizarre, you guys, really. He, well, he loved to bike ride. And our daughter is an Ironman triathlete. Wow. So Ralph was, you know, he was running and biking and swimming and probably going to do a triathlon one day. And he was riding his bike to work. I don't even know how many miles it was. It was a part-time job after that big layoff at General Motors. So he was doing that. And it was a Wednesday. Now he rode his bike on Monday. And on Wednesday, I got up. He had already left. And I just peeked out the front window. I'm like, oh my gosh, his car's in the driveway. And it's significant because he would only ride his bike one day a week. Mm. And I went, oh, my God, he decided to ride his bike again. Well, it was July 27th of 2011. It's a beautiful, beautiful day. And, you know, I'm like, OK, you know, I didn't think too much about it. I went about my day. I had to go to work that day. And I got home at, I don't know. 637 ish, I think it was. And the door wasn't open. He would be home by then. Mm -hmm. My front door was not open. Usually the dogs in the door and, you know, him riding his bike, I wouldn't have seen his bike like you would a car. And I get in, it just started raining a little bit. Mm -hmm. And the phone rang. And I'm like, oh, I bet you that's him. He's running late. He wants me to come get him because he's on his bike. No, it was the hospital. Mm -hmm. This is so unbelievable to me to this day. What the doctor said to me is your husband's been in an accident. He's bleeding from his head and unresponsive. Are you going to come here? And even now, when I repeat that, those words, my body goes into, right. you know, that shock that I felt at that time. Because I, I still can't believe somebody would say that to another human. Like I was home alone. I totally went into shock. I, I sat on the floor, you know, in to I didn't know what to do. Right. There were no, you know, and then finally 
I was able to call my sister-in-law, but I had to like, I had to like think of her name. I had to like think of how do I call her? Where's her phone number? What do I do? And uh, he was hit on his bicycle riding home. He was probably 10, 15 minutes from home and he was hit from behind. I never saw him. My brother-in-law was there. Um, he's a fire firefighter EMT mm -hmm. and they said they did not suggest I see him and I I took him up on that you know sometimes I I wish I would have or I wish mm -hmm. I would have had the the consciousness the the awareness to say you know if his face or head doesn't look good cover cover it I want to touch his leg I want to touch his right. foot I want to touch his hand but you know, all those those clear thoughts come later. So, mm -hmm. but the whole thing was wrapped in trauma. You know, it wasn't like, oh, I got to the hospital and I was greeted by nurses and doctors who, you know, put their arms around me and right. brought me water and Kleenex. It was very, very traumatic. The whole, probably that whole year actually was, you know, you get right. phone calls the next day. I was reminded of this the other day of donating body parts, you know? Right. And looking back, you're like, okay, I understand. But at the time you're still in shock and you're like, right. ah, I don't know. I don't know what I want to do. You know? Those are the things that people don't talk about. Um, when my, when my brother and grandfather passed away the same week within days of each other, and we were up there and, and it, nobody talks about the cold part of the experience when you have to have those conversations with the doctors and they don't know what to say to you and you don't know what to say to them. And then the phone calls and then getting the, the funeral and the viewing and the, all, all of this stuff set up and then people calling you and they don't know what to say. It's it's all grief is one thing. Yeah. And when we talk about the logistics of when we lose someone we love and all of the things that come along with that, it really is a whole experience and no one talks about it. Right. They don't. It's not talked about, right? It's just like the sweet memories and the it it is, it's traumatic. It's right. just yeah. Um, Judith, how has this, how has this experience changed your relationship with other people, if at all? Mm, that's interesting. Boy, that's a good one too. That doesn't get talked mm. about. That's a very good subject. Um, you really find out who you, who your friends are mm. <laughs> and who your family is, because it is such a hard thing to talk about. And I think people are afraid to say anything, thinking it's going to remind you or hurt you. And the thing is, Ralph's always here, right? always. And the gift to me is when people say, oh, happy anniversary, like on my anniversary, right? Or yes. gosh, at this Christmas time, I bet you really miss him. Hmm. And you know, nobody, nobody will say that it's right. been like I said nine years and I've even written about it in a book and I do these kind of shows to to you know hopefully get people to talk about it talk about it because we're always thinking about them you know not that it's in our lives and and affecting our daily lives but they're in our hearts always mm -hmm. always and um so I think I feel, for lack of a better way of saying it, I see people's true colors who I thought were close to me, right. who I thought would get it, and they don't. And then I have strangers, actually, who get it better than people who I thought knew me better and I had a better relationship with. Right, right. You know, like I talk to a lot of other widows, and you can't beat talking to other widows or other people who get lost right 
you know, when we talk about relationship with other people, I think a lot of times people don't have any idea what to say. And I think almost rightly so, because every person processes grief so differently and loss so differently. And so one of the things that I've said recently, instead of trying to figure out what to try to say, maybe ask a question instead, like, what do you need? What would you mm-hmm. like me to do? How would you like me to respond? I think that's a fantastic idea. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, ask if it remind, reminded me, sorry, <laughs> triggered the thought of people will say, call me anytime you want. I'm available. Right. Yes. And the thing is when you're, when you're in that grief, you can't, yeah. you can't, yeah. you're paralyzed, yeah. you're numb. You're like, I remember sitting there looking at a notebook page full of phone numbers and names going. So yeah, to be more assertive, to ask people, what can I do for you? Sometimes people are afraid of death or afraid of grieving because they feel like life isn't going to, can't possibly go on after. Can you share with us maybe some of the, the great things that have happened since you experienced this loss in your life? I sure can. Um, one of the things that was really cool. And I remembered this morning, that's, what's so fun about doing stuff like this is your mind starts going, (laughs) what are are some things I might want to mention that I totally, you know, were in the back of my mind somewhere. Well, Ralph got killed in July and that October, I had already made plans to go to Sedona, Arizona, which is where I've gone since 2006 usually every spring and fall, I would go for a week just to reboot. Well, that October, I already had my tickets right before Ralph had passed. I already had signed up for a weekend. I believe it was called a women's empowerment weekend at Enchantment Resort in Sedona, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, well, I'm still going. Now, keep in mind, I'm still numb. I still can't think straight. It's only been 10 weeks since Ralph passed, since he was killed. And I said, I'm going. And that was through the grace of God and spirit. I swear to God. And I got a ride to the airport. I got there. I got got to Arizona. I always run a car in Phoenix, drive to Sedona. Somehow I rented that car. I couldn't tell you how. (laughs) It was starting to be dark out. And I don't know where Enchantment Resort is. It's out in the back desert in Sedona, West Sedona. And I'm driving and I got there. I got there. And actually it wasn't nighttime. It was middle of the day because I was late. I was late for the little conference thing. And I found people because it's a big area. Mm -hmm. And then the speaker was Clarissa Pincola Estes, who wrote Women Who Run With Wolves, Mm. which is a book I have like that thick. I never got through it, but it's a great book. And I'm listening to her and she said, I want you all to write on an index card an issue you're having or something. And I, you know, I'm still raw, 10 weeks. I'm raw and vulnerable. I'm like, I'm going to write I don't know what to do. I lost my husband 10 weeks ago. Mm -hmm. I'm like, she'll never, she won't do anything with this. (laughs) Well, lo and behold, she, she reads it and she says, I want this person to come up here. So here in front of all these women, I somehow was able to walk up on the stage and it felt like it was just me and her. And I can't tell you the words she said to me. All I remember is the love, the warmth, and and the comfort Mm. so it was like a miracle because I needed that I needed people to acknowledge my hurt my pain my suffering the death of Ralph and she did she did and then she asked someone to walk would someone come up here and walk Judith back to her seat and so this gal I didn't know I didn't know anybody walks me back to my seat and and then afterwards i had all these women just just come up to me with such heart mm. warmth love that i needed and it 
just was healing. And I'm like, thanks, God. I know why you got me to the airplane, to the car, <laughs> you know. And Clarissa Pinkola Estes is one of my heroes. So, and then I ended up like really good friends with the gal who walked me back to my seat. Mm. And she ended up being in my life, you know, the next few years. And we did a lot of trips together and healing together. But, and then Sedona is where I went to a writer's workshop for free. One of those three hour things and learn how to write your own book. And, you know, and hence I wrote a book. I wrote a book about Ralph's death, about my healing um, called Remember His Name. And I happened to be in an Airbnb that me and my new friend um, rented overlooking the Red Rocks. So I would go out on the deck with my computer every morning and that's where I would write. And one of the cool things I wanna share is the guy who did the workshop was kind of our mentor. And he said, he would keep in touch with us as we were writing the book and he'd mm-hmm. want to read some and give us tips and advice. So I got the book all done, right? Chapters in order. I'm feeling really good about it. And he, I had my phone call with him, right? He's like, Jude, I want you to do alternate chapters. I'm like, what the hell are <laughs> alternate <laughs> chapters? And I like, are the books in order? What do you mean? And he said, well, he said, I I want you to kind of do like where you talk about the grief and the death. And then the next chapter is maybe more joyful and kind Mm -hmm. of back and forth like that. Right. And I, my mind was blown. I didn't know what he was talking about. He had me (laughs) read other books like that. And I'm like, okay, finally, I was sitting on the couch in Lake Orion, back in Michigan, by this time I'm back in Michigan. And I'm like, okay, God, I, I need help. I, I don't know what, I don't know what to do with the chapters. I got one through 12 or whatever it was. I kid you not. The message came through and it said, get a pen and paper. And I'm getting chills saying this. (laughs) I wrote what came and it was the order of the chapters Mm. and it worked i i did it and i still didn't believe it i said okay all right here's the chapters right wrote them down went back to look at the book and i said i had to maybe put little bridges in there maybe one sentence so it would work but i was like (laughs) it was it was such a joy and such a miracle it was so cool that's so awesome. When we, when we can listen and just take, you just, we have to have to have a little trust and a little faith that, you know, that these, that our intuition and spirit and God, and that speaks to us. And if we just listen, it'll work out, but some of us are stubborn. Some of yes. us are stubborn a lot of the time. Yeah. How did, how did it, more than once. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> how did it come to be that you ended up releasing a film, Judith? Let's see. I went to Sedona and I would stay with this lady in an area called Oak Creek Canyon. Beautiful area north of Sedona. And she knew I was grieving the loss of Ralph. She had met Ralph previously. And she said, Jude, why don't you go check out our film school? You know, Sedona has a little film school. I never thought about doing film. This is brand new to me. So I said, okay, you know, why not? So I go check it out. And I said, you know what? I'm going to film school. <laughs> so <laughs> do you Who believe does that, Judith? <laughs> I know. And this is, this is, Ralph was killed July 27th, 2011. School started August, 2012. Wow. So I packed up my car, my sister-in-law, my dog, she came with me just for the have a friend to drive out there with drove all the way out there my friend here's the connection my friend that i met with clarissa pincola estes the one that walked me back to my seat right she said jude do you want me to look for houses for you 
or places to rent? I, yeah, sure. I went to film school from August of 2012 to May of 2013. Wow. My film's called Ghost Spike. It's a 20 minute short documentary. And, you know, it's kind of a, of a, I would say the book is enlarges on the movie, on the film, right? Because mm -hmm. it's a 20 minute short documentary, kind of a compressed thing of my process of grieving, what I did to heal, and then the future. Mm -hmm. And and my film's been in several film festivals. And the first one was the Sedona International Film Festival, which to me, that was a God thing. I traveled around different film festivals in different states and I got to share my story yeah. and I got to show my film. That's amazing. It's amazing. And we don't, you know, I love your story because you really, you made choices. You made choices. I mean, it sounds silly, but you made choices to, 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 True facilitate yourself in your own grieving, but also to share Ralph's story. And um, you made that choice to do it. I think, you know, I, and I can't, and I can only speak from my own experience with grief as well, that you can get easily swallowed up by it and, and become frozen and not do anything and think, and, you know, wait for the world to happen to you and for somebody else to share their story and for somebody to pull you out of the grief, but you really have to just, you got to make those choices and do it. And, you know, if you want to get out of it, if you want to share their story, then you've got to be the one to do it. And, and I love that you did that you you've taken it and, and it doesn't mean that every day is perfect. And it doesn't mean you don't have these big waves that wash over you sometimes. Oh, and you yeah. think, where did that come from? You know, exactly. but, but you did it anyway. And if you could leave anybody with just any, any ounce of, of thought from you, if they're going through grief right now, what would you say to them? Here's two things I can I got, and I used to do this literally. One is I would ask myself, is it okay to put grief on the back burner today? It's here, but I want to go out and I want to go to the store. I want to go to the mailbox. My mailbox is rural, so it's at the end of my driveway. And I'd say, if I can walk to the mailbox, I've had a successful day. So just move, just move, somehow move, whether it's to the mailbox, Starbucks to get a coffee, Anything that gets you moving is a success. Making your bed, you, you don't have to leave your house, but anything like that. And the other thing that I feel I was gifted with, and I remember this turned it around for me, instead of focusing on the loss, I focused on the gratitude of how much time Ralph and I did share. Mm -hmm. I love those two um, little tips. I, and I think that they play into so beautifully how I said that I, I view you and your story from the outside that you took that action and, and um, you know, continued with your life and made your life amazing. And um, one last thing, I would love for you to have the opportunity to share with everybody anything that you want everybody to know about Ralph. Yeah. <laughs> well, gosh, he was an awesome dad mm -hmm. and an awesome husband. And he really, really loved us. Really, really loved us. I can feel that. I can feel, and I think everybody right now can feel that through all of your stories of him and through how you've chosen to continue to share about his life. Um, and I feel, I, I know that he is, he is with us right now and he's so proud of you and, um, and your children as well. And um, what a, what a beautiful legacy he's left and you're, and you're helping him to leave, but continuing to share his story. Judah, thank you so much for being with me today and sharing a little bit with us. Where can everybody find you, Judith? Um, I, I do have a Facebook page. 
I'm not sure how you get there. Do you just put it? In the game? <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna put all the information in the show notes for you. But I always like to, you know, anybody that's maybe driving right now, listening to podcast in their car, whatever, just know that you can go to thebreakthroughshow.com and look down in the show notes for all of Judith's information as well and the the exact Facebook link, so we know where yes, to find her. Yes, thank you. <laughs> I'm so not tech savvy. (laughs) That's okay. That's all right. Judith, thank you so much for being here with me today. Thank you so much. And thank you for letting me share my story and continue to heal. Absolutely. All right, guys, we'll be back in just a minute for more of the Breakthrough Show. Breakthroughs are about more than you might think. They're about discovering who you are, digging deep, reaching to the core of your soul. They're about healing. Healing yourself, understanding your beliefs, creating a ripple effect. And it's not just those initial moments that matter. It's about using them to bring more joy into our own lives and the lives of others. It's about having fun, letting loose, enjoying every moment life has to offer. It's about finding a safe space. It's about creating connection. Join us each and every month for exclusive programming where we invite you to go beyond the breakthrough. So we ask you, are you ready? We'll see you online at thebreakthroughshow.com. Welcome back to the Breakthrough Show. I want to give a big thank you to our special guest today, Judith Finneran. And don't forget to check the show notes and find out where you can get your copy of Remember His Name. Um, It's a fantastic book. Highly recommend it, especially for anybody that is going through a a process of grief like we do. It's natural in life, but to know you're not alone, I think it's going to be really important for you to get your hands on that book. So we're back now with our friend Leanne, and um, she is one and a half, as I mentioned, of the duo JT and Leanne in the morning on Bama country. How did it even get started for you to get in radio? Because I mentioned that you're a veteran and you have Mm -hmm. a family and you've done other things throughout the years. So how did it even happen that radio became a thing? So, so I'll give you the short version. It's, I was divorced. I had two little girls and um, I was done with men. I, I had my kids. This is awesome. I'm on my own. And uh, my mom was like, come on now, you know, you, you got to get out there a little bit. And so in Pensacola, there was a radio remote, like a kid's fun day. She's like, get out, you know, I, so the best advice she gave me was, <laughs> was um, don't be a wallflower, but don't be a slut which is, <laughs> I know, I know. I love my mom. She's, she's awesome. But is that not the best advice? I mean, absolutely, don't, you know, just be noticed, but, but be noticed the right way. And, and she's like, get out there and have fun. Take the girls. It's a beautiful day. So I did. And here's this radio guy with his daughter, um, uh, you know, trying to balance everything. And I'm thinking, oh, that poor guy. And um, so, so I walked up to, um, to, to where he was because he had really nice legs and um, walked up and said, hey, can I sign up for a t-shirt or spin the wheel? I think I had to spin the wheel or something like that. And um, he was, uh, he said he was out of t-shirts, um, but he, um, uh, he handed me his business card and said, come by the radio station and I will leave two t-shirts for your two girls. And I thought, Oh, well, that's awesome. (laughs) And, um, you know, I, because if, if you, if if you don't get two t-shirts for two girls, then you might as well get none. That's right. And, um, I mean, our kids were, were very little at that time. And, um, so I emailed him. So, so here's the part about, you know, not being a wallflower, I emailed him and said, Hey, let's have lunch. And Mm. he couldn't believe it. And we had lunch and, um, his, 
his uh, he was doing country music uh, radio in Pensacola. And, you know, I, I had helped him and we had played around with the idea a little bit, but I was deathly afraid to speak in front of people. <laughs> It's so hard to believe that now. I know. Yes, yes. But I was, I mean, I could not get up and speak and could not do anything like that. So when I tell you that the uh, the the first few years were pretty rough um, behind the scenes is an understatement. But um, but you know, we 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 made it work. Um, you know, we we blended a family. Uh, I have two daughters, he has the youngest daughter. Um, and, um, so, so that was fun <laughs> and, um, <laughs> yeah, Bible in one hand and wine in the other, Amen. um, but yes, <laughs> but, you know, b- blending a family, working together, um, you know, living our life on the radio, our kids didn't always like that, but, um, you know, we just, we, we made it work. Do you ever realize or recognize that you might be on the radio, that voice for someone that needed you're the only one? I hope so. I really do. And, you know, JT and I are, are, uh, you know, people will, will come up to us and say, oh, I listened to you on the radio. And we always stop what we're doing and thank them for coming up. You know, we, we do not have egos. We are normal people. When our listeners call and, you know, you, you make that human connection and, you know, we love it when uh, someone will Facebook message me and say, oh my gosh, I heard you talking about that list last week and it happened to me and that just makes our day it really does and and I hope that I can be the positive voice uh for someone or or just to make them laugh to get through the day I hope so Mm. I hope and pray so I really do Mm. I know that I know that you have so much gratitude for all of your listeners and the opportunity you have to be in their in their car in their headphones in the in their home um on a day-to-day basis and that's one of the things that when I started this show I used to say at the beginning of the, of every episode, um, that you could be anywhere else in the world right now, whenever you're watching this. And I'm so thankful that you're here. And I still stand by that. I have so much gratitude because there's literally, we talked about before, there's tons of radio stations and tons of TV and movies and work and kids and everything else. And it, and it really does make you feel grateful in that moment that they've taken that time to come listen to you. Absolutely. Little you, whatever you have to say. (laughs) That's right. Little old me who, who, if you would have told me 20 years ago, I was going to be on the radio. I'd have laughed in your face. (laughs) (laughs) I love it. I love it. Well, Leanne, where can everybody listen to you? Because I know they don't just, you can listen online now, right? You can. Um, so you can uh, grab your smartphone, go to the app store. You can search for W B A M. Bama Country 98.9. It's a free app in your app store. JT and I do mornings, um, 5.30 to 10 Central in Montgomery, Alabama. Um, And you can also on your smart speaker, Alexa, Google Assistant, uh, tell it to play Bama Country 98.9. Uh, WBAM on tune in. So you can tune in to tune in. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. We love being able to listen on devices too. That gave me such a giggle when I could say, um, you know, Alexa play the breakthrough show. And I'm like, Oh, yes. that's me. Yes. <laughs> yeah. no. it's like, Woo-hoo. I can, I can go to my mom's house and tell Alexa, Hey mom, now make sure you listen to me in the morning. You know, yes. even though you're not here, you can still listen. No excuse. <laughs> no excuses. Now you can listen. Any, right. I think that's such one of the benefits of being so technological now, you know, that's not just radio anymore. You can listen to radio anywhere. So I love that reminder too. Um, Leanne, thank you so much for being here with me today. It's been so fun um, and love getting to know you. And we, I was serious. We need to get your mom on the show for like life advice. Oh, segment. <laughs> she, she is awesome. She, she is, uh, you have to definitely uh, have the filter button, but uh, no, no, she is <laughs> She is, uh, she is my hero. She really is. And please give our love to JT as well. He's I obviously will. one half of the, your morning show and, um, it would, it would be good with Leanne, but it's, it's really great with JT and Leanne too. Yes, definitely. Maybe we'll do this again and I'll get JT to yes. join me. Yes. yes. He, he has survived uh, a wife of 15 years and, and counting three daughters who are now adults and a granddaughter. Yeah, oh, he, he can the- he can handle any anything. He can handle anything. <laughs> all the women, all the women. Well, thank you so much for being here with me, Leanne. I really appreciate you. Thank you so much.
All right, you guys, it has been a fantastic show today. I want to give a huge thank you to both Judith and Leanne for being here. Make sure you guys check out the show notes where you can find all of the information on how to connect with them. And of course, come back next week. So until next week, you guys, I'm Jessica Dugas, your host here. And I would encourage you to make every day a great day for a breakthrough. We'll see you next time. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of The Breakthrough. Please visit our website at www.thebreakthroughshow.com and be sure to join our 